Hey everyone, it's Maggie Bat here with vlog number 10, and today I just wanted to highlight a couple of Kickstarters that are out. Um, I am on sort of a Kickstarter freeze. I'm trying to be very limited on what I back and what I don't lately, because I'm going to go to Gen Con and just spend all my money there. So I figure it's at least... If I can't send them money, I can send them links from my blog. I, I don't know if that helps, but we'll see. Uh, there are a few that I'm very personally interested in. There's a few that just look amazing but aren't necessarily my style. Um, the one that I learned the most about this week was Florenza. So that is a remake of a game. Mage Company's doing it on Kickstarter. And my first impression was just like, oh, boring theme, boring gameplay, looks like another blah, blah, blah building art in the Renaissance. And then the more I read about it, I know, bad first impression, but the more I read about it, the more uh, classic and low randomness and very smart strategic plays. And um, they, it's actually compared to Kalis. So I've got my eyes out on that. I'm going to be asking some of my friends who have been playing games longer than me whether or not that's worth my time. Um, there was a little light card game called Fidelitas, and that is beautiful. It's Jason Katarski and Philip DuBerry um, doing their first collaboration with each other, and it, it has the coolest backstory. So Jason Katarski apparently made this as a Yo Gabba Gabba game for his daughter, and he and his daughter were putting people in their houses for the DJ to bring everyone to life, and when he started developing it, he used a more classic, like, influencing people in the in the whatever so that they could kind of poke fun, a little bit of satire in there, tongue-in-cheek. Um, but then they got this amazing art, and I think they've got a real winner on their hands. Uh, he actually launched his uh, new game company through this green couch game, so it should be interesting. Um, there's a new guy in town, uh, Ed Bariff, uh did his first campaign for Liftoff, Get Me Off This Planet, or Get Me Out of Here. And that is a semi-co-op, family-friendly alien game. And it has absolutely the cutest little aliens and really neat graphic design. Um, so that one, uh, we back through work. Uh, it's not going to be for me because it's a you know, semi-co-op family game. <laughs> But it looks really interesting and very well, well done. Um, I've not seen such a polished campaign from a first campaign in a while. Like, Stonemeyer Games is the other one that does that. Um, Luda Creations out of Massachusetts, uh, they put out Redacted on Kickstarter. So this is a hidden identity, hidden team game with some deductive elements and uh, gets the chopper type feel. But... Uh, Apparently they had a lot of game in it, and uh, I really like a situation in which I'm on a team, and maybe I find out who my teammate is, but they don't know that I'm on their team, so I'm trying to help them and hint to them, but without giving it away to the whole table. Um, interesting elements there. I'm really excited about that one. Um, the Paco games from Chris Handy looks kind of interesting. This is um, upwards of, right now I think it's four... Uh, gum size games, like little packs of gum, size of a DS cartridge. Um, so you get uh, one that's like a dexterity, kind of like flower fall, where you try and squish flies, and um, little other ones where you build the board, and really interesting ideas. Uh, I'm not super huge on filler games or pocket games, because I feel like I just crush them when they get in my purse, because they are in very light packaging, but they're beautiful. The graphic design couldn't be better, and I've been seeing a lot of excitement on that for Twitter and everything. Uh, the Wizard Dodgeball came out um, on Kickstarter, so that is one of the finalists from Tabletop Deathmatch, and that's Peter Newland, and this is a Death Spiral game you play in about 15 minutes, and so you're shooting... Uh, balls back and forth at each other trying to catch them just like dodgeball and the person who has people left over last wins. Now there is one cool thing about it. I got to see this game played in person and so at the beginning of the game you're allotted a number of points and you use those points to buy your spells. So your spells could be like lots of points and be really powerful or just lots of little spells. And then you kind of line up your players and you're going to take turns going back and forth between the two players activating one character. And when you activate a character, you can play spells on it. 
And when you get a, a background, a whole other round, and you reactivate that character, all those spells go back in your hand. So it's an interesting hand management, spell management type mechanic where you can move your spells around, but you have to plan about a round ahead. Uh, there is a solo player game called Hostage Negotiator uh, by Van Ryder Games. It looks really interesting. I The last solo game that I bought that's like literally for one person was Infection. And that was a victory point game about a year ago. It kind of had a pandemic type feel. And since then, it's been doing amazingly. Uh, this one is a hostage negotiation game. You're trying to save these guys. Um, the theme does nothing for me, but the game design looked pretty solid. So I will be excited to see where that one goes to. Uh, like I said, not, I'm not back in much right now because I just have to wait till they go to retail, but if anything looks like it's starting to taper off or not going to fun, maybe I'll jump on the bandwagon. But for now, all of these are doing really well, so I don't have to, I don't have to stress. <laughs> um, but that's all for now. I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.